previously on Painter's Guild. You make like the Red Queen and just off with her head. Do you have a tiny miniature little kill room? That's all saran wrapped off. I have her head, I have her head off. Yes, there you go. Santa got my letter. Mrs. Right. Claus, he wants heads and legs. Hey everybody, welcome to Painter's Guild. I'm Will Friedle and we are here yet again with Mr. Albert Lopez, who has been teaching us about the wonderful and kind of weird world of kit bashing, where we are taking stuff from one mini, stuff from another mini, smashing them all together and making a uh, third mini of the kind, which is pretty neat all you the way around. You can say it, man, we're just, we're making art. We're making so art, that's what it is. We're making we're using, art, baby. We're using tools and glue and all that good kind of stuff. So it is a little departure from our normal kind of show, but it's pretty great. Now, where we left off last time, we had cut our two minis apart. We had then started to assemble them again, and we left off with cutting off the head, sticking the head back on. We dr were drilling, we were gluing, we were pinning, we stuck mm -hmm. everything together, everything's dry. So now we are ready to uh, move on to the next stage. The Which next is stage what? is accessorizing. We're going to give her a brand new weapon. And uh, if you notice, we talked about a little bit in the last episode, on the back of the miniature, there's this this empty scabbard. That's right. And we want to put a sword into that scabbard. We to, do. To make it look like super cool. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. There's a trick to it. Okay. First thing we want to do is let's take our sword, which is our blade bit that we cut off of the original miniature and the little handle piece. And we're going to use our activator for this one, but I'm going to show you a cool little trick. We're going to prime the little area where where the stuff comes out. So we're just gonna squeeze a little bit just to get that area towards the nozzle just, just a little bit wet, okay? okay? And then we're gonna take the sword and we're gonna put a little bit of, of a piece of glue, just, just a little I'm gonna dab. Watch first. Little I'm gonna dab watch on first. that sword, that Better. scabbard. Okay. And we're gonna take this handle, we're gonna get that part wet, but we're gonna use the accelerant. So there's just a little, you don't even need to spray it, just as long as it's primed, you okay. can get you can get it wet and then just take it. And as soon as they come together, it'll dry like instantly. There we go, and see, you're just speeding the process up a, a little bit by having the glue on one side and putting a little bit of that accelerant on the other one. It's just a, a good little pro tip for gluing like those bits that are just like super small and very, very delicate. So while that's drying. While that's binking, what do we do next? Um, since we have a little bit of space here uh, on the back, we're gonna do we're gonna do something kind of cool here. This is what we saved the ponytail for. So let's take our ponytail, okay, and let's go to the to the side where we snipped it. And you can see which side that is. It's the side that's got the smooth little shiny part to that it. That side, right? Yep. And we're just gonna file it a little bit just to make that right. area flat. Switch hands. Just get rid of any. I am a righty. I do there not use the devil's hand. <laughs> go. My wife's a lefty. That's what I call. Oh, it, by okay. The way. So we're going to get that a little smooth there, and then what we want to do is we want to glue the ponytail on the back. And is it against her body? Yeah, it's against, it's kind of against her body, so. Okay, so it's like. Once you flat side facing her. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Like. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, the way you, you have it kind of tucked in there to where it's sort of like. Yeah, like that. Poke. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, okay. Yeah, so, so that's where you want it to set, so dab a little glue on there. You putting your glue on the ponytail put, or on I'm the- I'm putting the glue on the back, like right between the shoulder blades where I know I want it to go. If you feel that it's not set exactly where you want, you can adjust it a little bit with one of these metal sculpting tools. I think it's pretty good actually, where I, where I have it. Right, and then- think. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Very good. Thank you. I'm gonna put a little more glue on there though. Yeah, yeah, you wanna make sure that it's nice and secure, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a little accelerant on there so that it's, so that it dries fast. All right, so then we can set that aside while that dries. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Looks really good. Sweet. Cool. All righty. So. My warrior goddess. Now, here's where it, it gets a little tricky. We're gonna sheathe this sword into the back scabbard right here. We want it to actually go into that scabbard. Ha right? Okay, so you realize is, that this is a solid piece of exactly, metal? Exactly, exactly. So we're gonna, do, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a little illusion here. We're gonna take the clips, we're gonna get it somewhat flat with the we edge of the pummel. We just glued it together. I, I know, that's why I used a little accelerant. So. Flat end, right up, almost completely flush with the pummel, or with the quillen. I'm sorry, not the pummel, the quillen. We're gonna get that nice and flush. We're gonna snip, and then if you notice, there's just the slightest you bit of blade. The hint there's just of a blade. little bit, yeah, just a little hint of blade on there, and then applying barely any pressure whatsoever because, like he said, we just glued this. We're gonna gently file it, keeping that piece as preserved as possible. All right, so you should end up with a little bit of a handle, a quillen, and then just like you said, a little hint of blade sticking out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue that little How's bit. That? Brilliant, All that's right. good. 
So we're gonna glue this thing right here. And it's a little bit tricky because you don't want it to be too much of an angle. It'll look kind of strange if it's at too much of yeah, an angle. Yeah, how do you how do you not um, do so, that? So it's, th there's a trick to it. So we're gonna put glue in two different places. So should it look like that? Yes, exactly like that. And you wanna glue it in so two places. You're gluing exactly it. Exactly like that, okay. Gluing it to the scabbard and gluing it to the arm. In fact, mine's a little crooked. I think yours, you got yours way better. Oh, I didn't actually glue it yet. That was just. Scabbard. Just where you wanted to set it? Yeah. I'm gonna put a little accelerant on there. And there we go. Okay, now it's just sticking to me. Stop sticking to me! Sorry. No, it's okay. Talk to my glue. You got a reason with it, and, and a lot of glues can't be reasoned with. It's like the, the Terminator. It's the problem. Can't, can't be, be bargained, bargained with, can't, can't be reasoned, reasoned with, with, doesn't know pity, pity or, or remorse, remorse or, or fear, fear, and it, it will, absolutely it will not stop ever until you are dead. dead. There you go. That's right. Nice. See, this is not this is this is not working for me like at all. So it's now stuck in there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You can, and and if you if you set it but you feel it's not right, do exactly as you did. You can use these uh, these little sculpting tools that have like this hook, sort of hooked. Uh, yeah, careful. <laughs> that happens. Get it off your finger before it dries too much. Let's use the accelerant. Get, let's not. Let's not and say we did. Yeah. There you go. Oh, now it's stuck. <laughs> Laugh it up, Albert. This is what happens when you got a Sanka in you. I'm sorry. What if she's unarmed? She's not going to kill very many orcs, but no. But she's armored, she, so she likes orcs. She's 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 I don't know orc adjacent. That's where she lives. She's she's well, technically I live in Simi Valley, but I'm orc adjacent. <laughs> so there you go, right? Yeah, that's 60, perfect. 60 so, first time so to charm. Is it, is it, if it's set on the glue, I would say use a little accelerant if, if you've it's, actually it's got. It's set on the, oh my God, now I'm touching it. Don't, don't use your hands, use, I'm telling you, use these, use like this. Use the dental tool? Yeah, use the dental tool. Right. You're, you know, it's not, the glue's not gonna stick to that. The glue's gonna get all in the, in the creases of your hand and, and it's, you know, hand is like naturally sticky. To, to things like glue, they are. I'm just adding to the, blue humor of this show. I didn't say anything. Yep, it's stuck to my hand now. I'm kidding. All right. So. Beautiful, yeah. So so she's fully armored, she's got the helmet, and if you look at the back, she's got she's rocking the ponytail and the sword is in the scabbard. So she's like fully armed. She's ready for this big bad weapon that we're gonna make for her, this okay, freaking cool. war hammer, which is like the dopest, but. Well, you know what, while you're telling oh, me, sure. or about to explain how we're gonna do the war hammer, this is a perfect time to cut to Mr. Brian Merlongi for what's gonna be our last pro tip. Mm, the last one? Of the season. Better be good. You know what, Brian, I do wanna tell you something, because I know we have kind of a relationship, but. It's an honor to have you here, and I'm gonna miss you-ish. So, thanks for coming, and give us one last pro tip. Now that you've learned how to use the pin vise, here's something that uses it in an entirely different way. For battle wear, like bullet holes, all you need to do is pick a few strategic spots on the miniature and drill a few smaller holes. Now, the drill bit size will dictate the actual caliber of the bullet. I prefer to drill a few holes in a line to mimic a spray of gunfire. Prime your mini and paint a thin white line underneath each hole, and now you've got professional looking battle damage with zero effort. Nope, I was wrong. Not gonna miss you at all. Thanks, Bri. All right, so where were we? All right, so we have our, our female paladin. She's fully accessorized. The only thing missing is her Warhammer. Yeah. So we are gonna take uh, the Warhammer that we cut off of the sprue, and we're gonna go about, if you're looking at the at the full length length of the haft, we're gonna go about a third of the way up. So right. like there-ish? Yeah, you know, I'd say a little less. You might be cutting just a bit too much of it off. Just a little, I think that might be split the difference. But yeah, there we go, there we go. All right. So just find about there, make sure that the flat is facing uh, where the hand is yeah, gonna I go. Yeah, I so, cut it like oh, five okay. minutes ago. Well, you're like way ahead of me. Okay. So. All right, so then we're gonna take the file and we're gonna file that down, get it nice and flat. That's actually pretty pretty flat. Look at that from the cut. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. Before we glue the hammer on, I think it might actually be easier to work around this small pommel than to glue the hammer on and work work around that. So Copy we're gonna put that. the pommel okay. on there first. The Doing pommel this, goes goes goes. Uh, yeah, it's flat side. Flat side against the fist with the bulb facing down. So A sentence never before it's like that. In the nope, nope. In the history of mankind. Now we're gonna be very. We got to be very careful with this because if I'm there's ever glue if there's, my hand, if there's ever a point in which 
your hand is in danger of being glued, it'd be this. So you could probably use we could probably use our tweezers to pick that up and set it. So we'll just we'll, we'll give that a try. Right, let's see. So we're gonna dab a little bit of our glue to the bottom of the hand there, just boop, giving it a little. Do I do the sound effect? Little, boop. yeah. There you go. Sound effect that always works better. Okay. A little boop of glue, and then set that piece on there. Once you make a contact that you're comfortable with, you got to hold it there for a oh couple my. of seconds. Yeah, there we go. See, like it'll set so you can then change the angle on it. No, oh, I'm glad that worked out so well for you. Yeah, I've been doing this for a minute. Got the... So I'm going to set this down and we'll see here. I'll give you a hand. No pun That's plenty. Yet. That's plenty. I know, but I can't. Use the tweezers, homie. I tried. The tweezers didn't work. Not I working? I kept dropping them with the tweezers. Oh, no, it's stuck to your feet. Oof. There you go. We'll get this, man. It's we'll get so this. so little. I believe in you. Here, you're gonna hold it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a helping hand. Let me know when it's, when it's good. It's good. I'm trying to just pray right, right oh. into my eyes. So here we go. Ready? Thank All right. You. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You never do that. <sighs> Got it. Yeah. That was horrifying. Hey, man. It's teamwork. This is teamwork. I think man. real battle with a battle hammer would be easier than what we just did. Right there. <sighs> yeah. So then we're gonna take the hammer and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, but we're gonna have a bit more control because the, the yeah, hammer's a slightly larger and, yeah, miniature, yeah. so. Now, does it matter which way we're facing our hammer? I kinda like it being... Sideways. Sorta, not not fully sideways, maybe just a little little bit at a three-quarter angle so that it's slightly... Like that -ish. Facing forward, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So it's a little bit forward. Now, mine's not filed properly, so I'm gonna sit here and, and mess with filing mine down mess while it. you're, mess while it you're while doing I... that. Glue my thing. Well, you glue your fingers together over there. I'm a kid, a kid. You don't have to, kid. How's that look? Oh, it's beautiful. There you go, man. She's got, she's got, it's, hey, stop. Hammer time. She's like, she's ready wow. to rock. She's ready. I came up with that. Hammer I, time joke? I just came up with that. Man, you have any jokes about Max Headroom you want to throw out? Um, Hammer time. I could. Give me a minute. I can come up with a Max Headroom joke, but. My hammer is almost ready. I just gotta. Do you need a hand? Do you need me to spray while you do that? Um, you said teamwork. You know what? I think I could use some teamwork on this, homie. Let me. Uh, yeah. Do put what you a gotta do. And then... All right. Ready? Go for it. Beautiful. Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. Teamwork. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So there she is. She's ready to bring the hammer. All right. So now, what's next? Next. We get to play with the green stuff. Oh, this stuff. Now, again. green stuff, a little of this goes a really long way. And it sticks to everything. It sticks to everything. In fact, we're going to want to make sure that we have our water for this one. Okay. So we're going to bring in. Thank you. We're going to bring in our, whoa. We're going to bring in our water and try not to make a mess. I like to start with, uh, you got this, this little cutting tool here. It's got like this sort of scimitar blade, and we use that for cutting the green stuff. Is that this one? We don't, yeah, we don't need much. Honestly, you could cut off a corner of the blue. A little bit of the um, blue. Yeah, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the yellowish green. The green. And we're gonna make a darker shade of green with this. What are we actually doing with the green All right. stuff? So with the green stuff, we're gonna get into a couple of these cracks here. The, the main ones I'm seeing is just where the ponytail meets the helmet, which I don't know if you, ha if you really have that problem with yours. I think yours is pretty much, yeah, the ponytail's looking pretty good, but your concentration of green stuff's gonna go like right into this neck area right here okay. to smooth out. To we don't wanna see the that. neck area? Uh, we just want to keep it. We just want to keep that area smooth. So, you know, when you when you cut off a figure's head and you're putting it on another body, the telltale signs that it's a kit bash is like around the neck. So you just want to keep okay keep that area clean so that it doesn't look like a kit bash. So that's what I'm going to want to do is put it around yep. the neck area. Around like uh, the front of the neck, uh, anywhere where you can like kind of see a gap. I'm going to break off just the smallest, teensy little bit of this green stuff, and even that might be still too big. So I'm going to try and cut that piece in half. So then you find the spot where you want the green stuff to go. I'm sort of trying to blend it into this hair. I'm kind of using a little bit of my, of my finger to, to keep it on there as I pull the tool free. And then I'm gonna dip the tool in water so that the next time I make contact with it, it doesn't, it doesn't stick to it. And then I'm just going into that crack with the point of this tool, making sure that all those uh, gaps are sealed in. And then right in here where you see the putty sort of uh, accumulated around the helmet, I'm gonna start dragging down with the shape of the hair, and that's gonna get this piece to sort of blend in with her ponytail a little bit. I don't really need that. Yeah, I think you're mainly just filling uh, the gap around the neck, 
and uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you what to do for that here in a sec. Yeah, there you go. In fact, you could take you could take the tool and you could scrape some of that out of there. I would say maybe okay. even just like dig a little bit of that and make sure you're not covering uh, under that chin right there. Like okay. dig dig a lot of that out of there. But gotcha. but yeah, you've you've got it, man. Green stuff. Green stuff. Love it. And then yeah, you're you're using the uh, keeping the tool wet. You're using the metal part to just sort of stamp it down and get get it like nice and smooth. Yeah, there you go, dude. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And then I'm gonna remove just a little bit off the front so that that floor de lis that she has on her chest plate isn't isn't blocked. We don't want to lose that. And then back here, we're gonna blend some of this in. So if you look around the back. We're gonna blend some of that in with the hair. Pull pull those lines down and blend that Let in with do the that. hair. Let me do that. Perfect. Don't you, don't you be doing my work, sir. No, no, sir. it's yours. It's all you, brother. And then you could probably scrape a lot of that, that doing, stuff out of there. Yeah, there you shoulder go. area. Perfect. And then let me see. Yeah, I think mine could use a little yeah, I more. do the other side. Mine could use a little more green stuff in between the helmet and the collar, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. stuff a little more in there, but you know what? I'm actually gonna need less than what I used before, which mm -hmm. if that's even, if you can even imagine that, I'm just going to take the smallest, smallest teensy little bit there. Just this is like delicate way. work here. Mm -hmm. Green, you get the green stuff. It's, it's when you're really at the, uh, the master level, and the, it's it's the upper levels. Yeah, and it, and it's what really gives the stuff that you custom kit bash the the pro feel. You know, if you can't find the seam the seam lines, if you can't find the lines in it, then then you've done it right. You've done it right, exactly. So, and yeah, now so. after this, we're prepared to paint, right? Uh, we have one more little detail to fix with her, um, which is the shield, and we just want to make sure that it's you know just kind of file the edges, make sure there's nothing like rough Oops, sticking yeah, off little, any of the I corners. I got a little. Uh, yeah, if you have some flash, some, some mold flash lines there. on there, you can clip it, and then just a real quick filing of the edges, just to make sure that it's all smooth. So now what do we do? Do we glue it on? Uh, no, we want to paint paint it first. We're going to paint these items separately so that we don't lose any of the detail, like in the arm behind the shield, all these like pouches and all the stuff that's in there. We want to sure. we want to preserve that detail. But she is uh, she's looking good. She's got the new weapon. She's got the sword on her back, the ponytail, the new helmet. I mean, she's ready to prime. All right. Well, if we are ready to prime, that means we're getting ready to paint. That means we have a little break right now, and I think it's the absolutely perfect time to go do something pretty amazing. So we're gonna throw it to an incredibly handsome chap who's really good at his job, me. Thank you so much, me. I'm so glad I got the chance to meet myself on Tinder. So we're doing something very special today. We are shrinking me down so I can look at a mini close up. I'm kidding. Of course, we are finally here. We are at Stupid Buddy Studios. We are gonna be talking to Seth Green and Zeb Wells. We're gonna be talking about Super Mansion. It's amazing. Stick around. And now we're here with Seth Green and Zeb Wells. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah I know you're huge Painters Guilds fan. So we it's... love painting. Yeah. Zeb, Zeb and I, well, you didn't ask that, so I maybe shouldn't offer it. <laughs> you're just going to start offering stuff I before could. I ask, or what? Zeb and I both paint stuff. We both grew up painting uh, models and miniatures and custom making all kinds of stuff. And you've got a particular Gundam. Oh, addiction, I'd yeah, say. Todd yeah, Todd McFarlane came in and did a tour, and he couldn't take his eyes off my Gundam. Of course I was not. Very proud. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Do Hand you paint still paint? It. Yeah, I do. And I started because it, just hanging out with all these artists, you start getting very jealous <laughs> of their skills. I, kn I didn't know how to paint things, you know? So you start, and everything looks like crap. I was good right away. Really? That was my thing. <laughs> right that sounds first like you. Yeah, yeah, right away. No, it wasn't good at all. It was horrifying. <laughs> uh, but we're here because of Super Mansion. Which Pretty is a show that phenomenal. Zeb, Zeb created with uh, my partner, Matt Sunrise. Okay, so also for people who don't know, where, where do we see this? Crackle. It's on Crackle. It's okay. on Crackle, so you can go to crackle.com or download the Crackle app. It's free, and you can catch up on season one and season two. Now, and third season starts in April. April. It, yeah. Now, the thing that I liked about the show is you used no-name actors to really voice everybody. Right. <laughs> it's important <laughs> to I... hire first-timers, young ingenues, and give them a shot. Very impressive. There's this this boy, I think he just turned 16, because mm -hmm. he had to he had to Uber here. He couldn't drive himself. His name's Brian Cranston. I've heard of him. Yeah. Again, smaller actors you decided to cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And then Chris Pine came on at the end of the first season to play Dr. Deviso, who was the big villain. Yeah, Pine came to us, and he's like, how am I going to get a shot? And we were like, play this villain on this... <laughs> Half hour R rated animated show, and uh, then you will 100% be ready to play the captain on a Star Trek. <laughs> it's one of the one of the biggest yeah. movie stars in the world. So where did the idea come from? I think we had been uh, working on these DC comic specials 
for Robot Chicken. And we were just having so much fun, like, pushing how much of a story we were giving these episodes. And at a certain point, we were like, well, why, you know, why don't we just tell a story? We love superheroes. I grew up reading comics, and I wrote comics for a while. And so why don't we just create our own superhero team? Well, yeah, well, I was just saying, you guys had to essentially create all new stuff because you couldn't really play with any of the other, and then you can yeah, just kind of do whatever you want, right? But that yeah. gives you a totally different chance to do something original, right. to, to expand on something that you'd be limited by if you tried to use Superman or Aquaman. Now, you guys uh, have, are kind of famous for doing the claymation, stop motion, that kind of vibe, so was there any doubt that that's how you're gonna do it? I mean, were there discussions of maybe going straight animation, or was it always gonna be kind of using the models? It's just in the blood of the studio, so I really wasn't thinking about it any other way. I very much wanted to see these characters in a, in, in, in a way that I could touch them and hold them. That was very important to me, <laughs> as creepy as that sounds. But again, I have to imagine as somebody who built models and painted and did everything growing up, that something about the tactile, you know, the constant being able to touch and play is important. As a, a visual medium, stop motion is really unique because it's real photographs and it's life brought to something that is not alive. So yeah. you get the benefit of materials or textures, you get fabrics and, um, shadows and all kinds of stuff that you in stop motion that you can't get with any other kind of animation. Do you ever get to jump in there and paint? Um, I haven't had to do anything that, like that since first season. First season we were at a deficit of everything and so I, I prepped some puppets, I built some stuff that we shot. It's not great. <laughs> I think I painted something that had to be repainted. <laughs> and of course they, they repaint them in 15 minutes. Well, then this yeah, that's, it it's better. horribly... It looks it, better yeah, than it's what horribly you did. Deflating, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. stuff you don't think about though. When, you, when you're individually painting something it's usually as a showpiece and you're not considering it and having to withstand the rigors of animation. And so yeah. the way that our teams will prepare stuff to survive being touched by several people for days at a time, yeah. it's, it's way beyond what we would do for our own That's crazy. collegiate yeah. efforts. <laughs> Thank you, Seth Green and Zeb Wells. Thanks for having us here. We know you guys are obviously, we've heard, busy as hell. So right. uh, Thank we you appreciate what me. you guys do, and, and thanks for swinging by. And, and keep painting stuff. How amazing was that? I just want to thank Seth Green and everybody over there for inviting us over. Unbelievable. What an experience. Um, and now, because this episode, full disclosure, is not about painting, per se, as it was about kit bashing itself, we have jumped ahead in the painting process. So Albert has actually already uh, base-coated our new mini. Uh, so we are just going to now work on some washes, some mm -hmm. highlights, to just kind of finish it up. We're skipping right to the fun part. Set it off, so mm -hmm. there we go. So let's get it started, where we, uh, where we pick up from here. So first we're gonna start with a wash. So uh, I guess you wanna, you wanna start with a black wash, you wanna probably use your Nolan oil. Okay. Um, and I honestly with don't the have- Nolan oil again. Yeah. It's really gonna really gonna make talk mm -hmm. about the pop, the Nolan oil, especially with the black on the red, will really make the folds in the cape pop yeah. and everything along That's what we want so. for sure. So, what are we hitting first? Uh, we're gonna start, I think, with the cape. Like, right. uh, really paying attention to those areas that are light. Like, you probably don't want to go too heavy on the on the wolf's head. Just or, cause uh, I spill, I'm sorry. I'm gonna use my Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Cause I do, I, I tend to spill. It happens, you know. So. So yeah, you'll dip a little into that, and then do you usually go right from ink to to paint or do you do you water your oil down? Or, do you, I, yeah. I usually don't water the washes down. See, like that's not even a lot, so I'm barely right. hitting it right there now. There we go. But you can see how the uh, how it's starting to change the tone a little bit. You're right. getting some shade. We're getting some shade and we're getting a little bit of depth to the red. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure it's we beautiful. Hit the bottom of the cape too. So after we do the the cape, what are we looking at next for our washes? Uh, you probably want to do the armor, so you want to shift from, well, you want to finish the whole back, so you probably want to finish right, right, right. back of the helmet. You want to put a little attention onto that hammer, too. You want uh, color separation between the actual haft itself, which is going to be brown. So use her uh, helmet, the plume on the helmet as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That That's looks super cool. Not too much. So I'm going to do a little bit of wash. I'm going to start washing this base here. Whoops, I'm gonna move that shield. That's really where you're gonna see it, because that shield's really bright. Yeah. So washing on that shield is gonna be really cool. Which I'm gonna do now, because I just wanna watch it. Sweet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grimy it up just a yeah. little bit. It's a wolf head, you know? It can, it it can be It can be grimy. That'd be a good thing. It's also, she is not ceremonial, she fights. Oh yeah, she gets into the mix. So She doesn't wear anything. Look at that, it just makes your blacks pop. Yeah. Check that out. I'm gonna do the front of the cape. 
There we go. So that base is looking pretty nice. I wanted there to be a little bit of grass and a little bit of stone sure. in there, so there's more than one color. Do we have any more handles left? Or are they still being used? Oh, the, for, to st stick the miniature in? Yeah. It's pretty cool. They're sick. All right. Thank you. This is super cool. Look at this. So boom, you pop it out. Oh, sweet. Oh, look at that. That is and so cool. You boom, you right there. How could I have gone this long painting miniatures and, and then not look at done? that? What an age we live in. Thank you, Citadel. All right, so after I've kind of messed up, not messed up, but beaten up the armor a little bit, what's our next step? So once uh, once it dries, we're gonna get the dark tone back to the mid tone. So we're gonna get, we're gonna take all the same base colors and we're just gonna put it on top of the now darkened uh, similar versions of themselves. That okay. way it's gonna make the base, uh, the base coat pop on gotcha. everything. All right, so we're gonna use uh, the base red here, which is, no, it's not that one. Okay, here we go. This uh, Mechrite red, which is, I don't know if they sell this one anymore, but it's pretty dark. I'm gonna beat it like it owes us money so that okay. it's nice and uh, so that we have a little in the cap. We're gonna okay. use that and start retracing the contours of the cape, making sure that we keep the dark red in the crevices and that the lighter red is uh, are all the, the parts that are sort of facing us. So you want so. in the center of the cape? Yeah, you're just going to trace on top of of the con the natural contours, not getting any of that red in the in the crack. You don't want to go oh, into not the in no, the crack. No, you oh. want to, you're you're hitting the you're, oh, you're, okay, yeah, so we're hitting saying. all the the stuff that's that's out, contouring outward that. to us. Gotcha. Yeah, there we go. Gotcha. And then it's good. I like to at the bottom of certain areas, like when you reach the bottom of a cape. Check this out. You sort of hook outward, and you sort of build out. You ma you make. Uh, as you get to the bottom of a cape, you taper your color sure. outward a little bit, and that, that helps sort of keep the organic uh, feel of like cloth. So when you're happy with that mid-tone, we'll go ahead and skip right to a lighter shade. We'll go to, e we'll use Evil Sun Scarlet, and we'll, uh, we'll put a lighter shade of red on there, and it'll look super cool. There we go, all right. So now what are we gonna be doing? Oh, that looks lovely. Okay, so we're gonna go one shade lighter, and I'm gonna show you what the, I'm gonna do sort of that triple, triple tone I've been talking about. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So your mid-tone, you're, you're covering a little more surface with your mid-tone, but when you go to the lighter shade, you're, get, you're getting less of it. So you're just like really tracing like lines that just go straight down. But right straight on down the, the same. Cape, on top on, of the red you just did. And you're gonna did. see it pop, dude. It's gonna look super cool. So you're gonna love pop. it. You're gonna love it. Oh my God. Very cool. We'll do one last little bit here before we say bye to the lovely audience. Uh, We'll glue uh, the Here's shield. The red, by the way. Glue the shield on there. That looks awesome, dude. That looks Check really that out. cool, yeah. It's popping. Digging that. She's popping. Popping and locking. Let's glue on the shield. All right. And let's get her ready for battle because, That's unfortunately, right, we are out of time, sir. We are out of time. All right, we're going to so do what are we we're doing? glue this shield on there. I'm going to do one minor little detail to this shield. We're going to focus in on the shield a bit. I want the area around the eyes to pop, so I'm going to. Just put a little white over that gray that surrounds the eyeball. Am I allowed to use my shield as I you see totally, fit? You totally, totally can do whatever you want, dude. It is your shield. Good. It is I'm your do protection. One last little detail on the shield myself. Awesome. She is now officially fighting for the Painter's Guild. Oh, heck yeah, dude. You put a PG on there? I nice. I certainly did. Nice. There we go. That's some clever branding right and there. that is gonna be a fun way to end our episode when we glue that on. Mm-hmm, we got our glue, our glue's right here. Let me just hook you up with that. There you go, sir. Yeah. And you don't need much. Uh, I, I would say you can put it on the shield. You're probably gonna get a little better control if you put it on, if you put it on the actual miniature. But I think you're smart in putting it on the shield so that it doesn't drip down what we just painted. Yeah. So I think you might actually be a wee bit smarter in how you're doing it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Beautiful. Fully armored with her new awesome helmet, her Painter's Guild shield. I mean, what Pretty else is there to say other great. than she's a brick house? <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's not what we say at all. No, it is what you say. <laughs> she's a mate mate, slaying every orc in town. It well, works. you know what? That's it. We got to wrap it up. Wrapping it up, baby. We are wrapping up the got episode. Awesome we figure. are wrapping up the season. So, uh, so many people to thank. The first person I want to thank for joining us for these last two episodes, Albert Lopez. 
Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much Thank for teaching for having us me. about kit bashing, a little more about highlighting, all the good stuff that we, we learned in these last two episodes. I want to thank all our special guests that came, thank all the, the master painters that came and helped me, all the uh, incredible people we got to interview, everything. It was incredible, amazing. I've said incredible too many times, but I don't care because there's no other word. It was awesome all the way around. Thank you for joining us for season two. We certainly hope we get a chance to see you again. And just remember, every great masterpiece started with a single brush stroke. Thanks, guys.